don't rent a car very often, but it's exciting when we do. We're in Guadalajara and we rented a car from Veiko uh, Car Rentals. It's just outside the airport. They picked us up uh, at arrivals, brought us here, and we're so excited. We got a Nissan Versa. Versa? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah Versa. And uh, we're going to explore the the surrounding region of Guadalajara because um, if you've seen some of the other videos, uh, which I'll put up here, we have been to Guadalajara before, um, but we're excited to explore Jalisco now and more of the region. So let's, let's go. We had about five days in Guadalajara to explore as much as we could, so we headed straight to Chapala. I have a few videos coming out next week all about our experiences there and showing you what it looks like right now, so be sure that you don't miss those. After Chapala, the second place that I really wanted to go was Bosque de la Primavera. The Tapatillos, the nickname for the people of Guadalajara, call this huge forest park the lungs of the city. It's pretty hard to access without a car, so I knew that we had to check it out while we had our rental. We drove down a dusty road. We got to a locked gate where we thought we could go to the Bosque de la Primavera and like swim in the lake and enjoy some hiking. Oh, river, not lake. And uh, so we turned around and we went down a different road. And I think now we're on like private property, but it's still part of Bosque de la Primavera. Anyway, here we are. Here's the lake, the river. Why can't I say river? We're in a river. <laughs> we just had a little swim, sitting in the sunshine. It's a Tuesday, so everyone else is back at work and we're just here hanging out. I didn't know we could have brought like some things to barbecue, <laughs> but uh, it's such a beautiful day. It's so nice to swim in like fresh water. Oh. Highly recommend Bosque de la Primavera. It's a little hard to like find things, but um, I'll give a little uh, pin down below for where you can find this place on Google Maps so you can come here yourself. Another place that's best reached by car from Guadalajara are the ruins of Huachimontones. These round mounds are absolutely incredible and should without a doubt be added to your Guadalajara itinerary. We are at a place called Huachimontones. We're still at 5,000 feet here, ish, in, uh, in Guadalajara. So walking up this steep hill to get to the Huachimontones um, archeological site. It's cheaper than pretty much any other place we've been. Usually I thought that you always paid the national anthropological fee, which is usually 75 pesos per person, plus whatever the state wants to charge. But here, we only paid 30 pesos each to get in. And uh, maybe you make, up, you make up the rest of it in, in having to walk up this massive hill to get to the ruins. So they knock off the price for you or something. Um, but anyway, the 30 pesos includes um, visiting the archaeological site, which we're doing now, and then the museum as well. Maybe I'll speak to you again when we get to the top. All right, I'm caught my breath a little bit. We're at the first um, sort of area, which I always find fascinating. It's the ball game court. I think it's so incredible. I've said this before in other videos that like wherever you go in Mexico, whatever the culture was that was here, whatever the people were that were here, they all had these ball game courts. I think it's so fascinating how much things like traveled and spread, um, you know, throughout the centuries so long ago. Um, Huachimontones is, I just read, <laughs> around the same time as Teotihuacan, which is like 300 BC. And uh, yeah, that's pretty old. One of the main things about Huachimontones, which we haven't gotten to yet, this is just the ballgame court, like I said, um, is that they're like these rounded mounds rather than like the pyramid styles that you see maybe in, in Teotihuacan and, and Chichen Itza and stuff. Uh, so yeah, that's why we've been really interested in wanting to come here, adding it to our road trip uh, while we're here in, in Guadalajara. And uh, yeah, let's go see, let's go see the mounds. Never mind the views. Amazing. It's so nice to be so high up in the mountains. It's so beautiful. Oh, finally caught my breath. Pretty cool. You can't climb on these, but you can climb on all the areas that surround the, um, the ruins. We're literally the only people here. It's a Tuesday. Um, 
we weren't sure if it was going to be open. We were checking all of the, like their social media and stuff. And it seemed like they were, but it's an hour north of, uh, or west of, of Guadalajara. So it was a bit like, do we drive and to, you know, a two hour round trip just to make sure, but so glad we did. It's so beautiful and it's open. <laughs> so in case you're in Guadalajara in the next few weeks, it's, uh, you might have it all to yourselves, especially if you come on a week, a weekday, except Mondays when everything in Mexico is closed. <laughs> That was really awesome. Even better than I thought it was gonna be. I highly recommend adding it to a road trip that you do around Guadalajara. The easiest way I would say is definitely to get here by car. I do not believe that there are any buses coming here, um, but you may also be able to take a tour. There's also a, a taxi here. So I think like if you get yourself a taxi in Guadalajara, you can probably negotiate for them to like bring you here, wait for you and bring you back to Guadalajara as well. Um, or probably hire a private driver for the day but <laughs> i'm so glad we added it to our road trip while we we're here um really cool the museum was quite interesting the views from up here are absolutely incredible um so yeah highly recommend it i'll put the link um below to the location on google so you can find it because it's <laughs> it's not the easiest place to find unless you get yourself some some navigation system for sure Those of you that have been following along for a while know that no trip is complete without stopping at some amazing food spots. With a car, we could head out to smaller towns and roadside rest stops made famous by shows like Taco Chronicles on Netflix. We had birria from El Chololo, tortas ahogadas from Tortas Tonio, and burritos from Los Milagros de Dalila. We drove halfway to Chapala to this burrito place which is on what's the show? Taco Chronicles. The Taco Chronicles. Burrito. So we're gonna see if it's worth worth the trip. Uh, it's a sink there, that's the kitchen. And sour sauce. That's all I got. So I got the shredded beef and I got the cochinita pibil and oh boy is it good. Lots of salsas too. Mm, it's so flavorful. <laughs> we returned our rental car from Vaco. Um, I can't recommend them enough if you are planning a road trip around Guadalajara. They picked us up at the airport. They brought us back when we dropped the car back off. Um, I always prefer renting with smaller, sort of more locally owned car rental places like Vaco. Um, I'll link below to a blog post I have about renting in Mexico. Um, and, and it breaks down other smaller rental companies as well that are uh, in other parts of the country. But I, yeah, they were just, their customer service was awesome. I always think that these smaller places have the best customer service. They treat you so much more like a valued customer um, than the big wigs that you have to book through like Expedia for. All the insurance is included in the price that you pay. So when you book online, there's no surprises when you show up at the counter and you suddenly have to pay for a third party insurance. It's already included in the price. Um, so yeah, just highly recommend it if you're heading to Guadalajara. If you found this video helpful, if you enjoyed in traveling around Guadalajara with us, please give this video a thumbs up. It really supports my channel and uh, off to more adventures. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on other travels around Mexico for the rest of the year. And I will see you next time. Bye.